1616, the Roman Inquisition hauled in Galileo, the Italian astronomer, and commanded him to stop saying that the Earth revolves around the sun. Shut up, they said. Everyone knows that's wrong, and you're a bad person for saying otherwise. That's a well-known story, of course, and we laugh about it now, 400 years later, because the authorities were completely wrong. Galileo is a hero. They are fools. And we explain this by pointing out that they were religious nuts. They were superstitious. Nothing like that could ever happen now. But it turns out the one constant in human history is human nature. Not only does it happen now, it happens more than ever. But to attack other people for being right and then apologize for it does seem immoral. It is immoral. And when we're living in an environment where there is a lot of media immorality, you know, people would rather you parrot certain talking points rather than have a meaningful discussion and a meaningful dialogue. And they don't accept it. And at the moment that they start to censor speech and they start talking, you know, calling you names, like calling you a grandma killer, calling you a pro Putin puppet, you know, it's because they don't actually believe what they're saying. It's just these are ad hominem attacks to dissuade from having an actual debate. And there always should be an actual debate. On that right. issue. And, when, and when they never explain what you got wrong. They don't call it wrong, they call it disinformation, which mm -hmm. suggests it could be right. Obviously, money is motivating for a lot of politicians in D.C. that never leave. I mean, you think? Seriously, it's common sense. And yet sometimes people try to twist that narrative and pretend that what you're saying uh, cannot be said. It, it does concern me, however, because in American 2023, the only people defending the First Amendment, the foundational right, the right that precedes all other rights, which is the right to say what you really believe, and prove you're not a slave. Um, the, the right is the only group that defends that that freedom. And now they're not. Now they're saying, well, actually, maybe you need to register with the government before you're allowed to talk. So if the left's obviously opposed to the First Amendment, now a lot of the right is opposed to the First Amendment. So, like, how do we keep the First Amendment? Yeah, I think this kind of is... It's almost what Trump was referring to when he talks about the swamp. You know, they get a little taste of, of what they can earn for themselves and they kind of go further into this and actually doesn't become about America at all. And I think at this particular moment, you are seeing a, a fracturing on the right. There are people that are pro-America, America first. I am a person that considers myself pro-America, America first. And it absolutely makes my skin crawl when people try to tie America's success to what we have to do overseas. I, I, I believe in national sovereignty. I believe that America has what it takes here at home to be a great nation. And yes. actually, I think history sort of tells us that once we started this campaign of international liberalism following right. World War II, things kind of started falling apart, yes. especially this... Uh, a, a deep, uh, a steep decrease following the 1960s without question. I mean, socially, morally, economically, this has been a nation that's in decline. And so I cannot stand when I see these politicians on stage emoting and saying sentences like, we can do both. Look around you. Does it look like we can do both? Where is your evidence to support the claim that America can do both? Because I'm looking around and it's very clear, it's very obvious that we cannot do both. Uh, our children are failing academically. People are fearful to go into inner city communities. We have people that are suffering from depression, overdosing on fentanyl. We're fundamentally an unhappy nation because we don't have an identity because of these things. We don't have an identity. We've completely lost what it means to be an American. It is why I, I feel very inspired uh, when I hear someone like Vivek Ramaswamy speak and talk about American yes. principles. I hate the way that they, they illustrate their opinions about people that want that old America, that are nostalgic about that America. When someone says, and I've, I've heard of this statement, and I can't remember who said it, but you can't be pro-American unless you're pro-Israel. I just thought of the person who's probably in West Virginia who had both his legs blown off, right? Fighting overseas, who is pro-American. And you're telling him like, no, 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 unless you agree that every single war should be everywhere, you're not, you're not pro-American. We've lost our identity. I mean, that's completely a foolish thing to say. And I say this as somebody who, if I was going to be radical anything, I'm probably radically pro-UK, right? I married, yeah. a, I married a Brit. My children um, have dual citizenship. I would never utter the sentence that to no. be pro-America means to be pro-British. I love oh, the Brits. I love everything about, you know, I, I love being in the United Kingdom. But I know what it means to be pro-American. It means to be pro-American.